This is May 1st, 2020. This is the House Education Committee in the Vermont House of Representatives. And we are looking at um, S343, which is the bill that would delay implementation of Act 173. Um, first of all, are there any questions that folks have uh, about this bill? We have um, our ledge council in the room. Are there any questions about this bill? So here's what I'd, I'd like to do. There are a couple of options um, that I want to look at, and I kind of want to be prepared for both of them. Um, we have uh, a, a reminder about uh, Act 66, which was the lead testing bill. And um, as you uh, may remember, in order for that testing to be accurate, the, the samples needed to be taken while school was in session. Um, the state of emergency has shut down schools, making that uh, not possible. Um, Ledge Council, uh, Michael O'Grady has looked at that and realized that we would need to make changes uh, related to that. So the question I have right now is, is this something that we will simply add to this bill or if we will do um, a separate committee bill to do so? And I need to check in with, um, Jim and with Michael um, and with leadership to see what their preference would be. So what I'd like to do then is set this up in two ways. One will be to take a vote um, on, one, on, on delaying 173 from the committee now. We will hold that and then um, see if we're going to take it back up and add, add the lead delay or if we're just gonna pass this on um, so what I'd like to do is just be ready for that. So I would um, entertain a motion to approve, to agree to concur with the Senate's uh, bill S-343 related to delaying implementation of Act 173. You're on mute, mute Larry. So is, would the lead bill be, I'm not sure. I, I would almost think that we'd want to just do another bill for the lead testing. Um, I'm seeing other people nodding. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure that it's, that it really matches S343 um, dealing with, dates and dollars and etc. I think we should just do a new bill. I'm, you know, I'm certainly, it's certainly open for discussion, but that would be my feeling. So if I could see um, either little blue hands or uh, your hand as to whether you would like to wait and just do a separate bill. Are those that would like to do a separate bill, raise your hands. One, two, three, four. How many have I got here now? Well, I guess I Kate, I, I, I would put myself in the category of happy to listen to the advice of leadership and those mm -hmm. who know the process better, but yeah. it does seem cleaner mm -hmm. to separate the two topics. So I think what we can do then, because it looks like, like we have, um, what, what we could do then is just simply uh, be ready to pass this one today. We'll talk with Ledge Council and leadership and be ready for that on Tuesday. Um, in the meantime, I will, uh, I will be checking to see if that, if that is indeed the preference um, of the speaker, then we will go ahead and get this on the, the um, notice calendar on Monday, which would make it up for action on Wednesday. Caleb. Uh, yeah, yeah, and just to, another point there, I think one 173 is such a big piece of legislation that delaying it is maybe beneficial to stand on its own just for simplicity of messaging around that because it is so consequential. The other thing is it occurs to me that we're talking about lead now, but, and I know that was a recently passed bill, but there's probably a, a few other things out there in the world of education that might need a delay. So it might behoove us to make sure we're thinking of all of them. And then we might do a bill that's around here are the things we're delaying, you know, because I think it's for 173 to be delayed on its own is appropriate given the magnitude of that legislation. 
but it would be good to not have another three bills delaying three things, you know? So to sort of say, okay, let's think about this for a second, okay, just do this and then see if we need a catch all, we're delaying the following. Um, and maybe that doesn't work that way. It just occurs to me that that's an easier bill to understand. The following currently ongoing initiatives with deadlines need to be delayed. Um, Let, Let council does go uh, through. I think that there's a request that comes. I, I, I saw the, the something from, from Michael O'Grady and that do they actually go through and see if there are things that need delays. And this is one of the ones that O'Grady identified. Are you aware of that? Uh, Jim? I'm not aware of a systematic review of things that might need delay. That question might be best posed to the agency. Um, they have a good sense for, for what's on, on the on what's coming up, I would think. Okay, so what I understand um, is that uh, Ledge Council had been asked to look at any programs or regulatory requirements that may be affected by COVID-19 pandemic and emergency response. And they were they put out a question to um, to the Department of Health to see if that is one of the ones that they needed to address, and they've gotten back and said yes, they do. So um, I, I'm I'm really just fine to just go ahead. We'll t do 173. I just need to get that clarity from leadership. Um, Jim Damore, did you have something? No, 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 we were all asked by Luke to put together a list like that. Um, yeah. And um, I couldn't see anything in education necessarily that, that was in that category. Um, that was away from me, it was obviously a little bit with Michael, but um, so I, I don't think there's more, but we could ask the agency that question. I think that'd be helpful. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, Larry Coopley, you had a question or a statement? Yeah, um, S343 has, um, has an appropriation in it. Have you checked with appropriations as to whether I have. Not, and we're okay? I have, um, that is up to that, that the clerk will, that they are aware of it, I'll put it that way. They are okay. aware of the, the $9,000. Okay. Yeah. Will it go to appropriations after we um, vote it, this out? It, I believe that will be up to the clerk and, and okay. as to whether that needs to go or not, okay. or whether they can just do a drive by since they already know about it and they've seen the language. Um, but I will follow up on that. Let me just send that to Rebecca. So yeah, so we'll find out, but still be ready on Tuesday. Sarita Austin. Um, hi, the um, Senate bill that was on the waiting study, the task force, is that, does that, is that brought up next session or is it, can that be delayed or what, well, where is that? What are the options for that? When the this session, at the end of this biennium, everything uh -huh. that's on the wall comes down. Everything right. is dead. Right. Everything needs to start from scratch. Um, I would anticipate that that will be uh, a conversation again. Okay. Um, I think it does. Uh, it, it's connected to 173. It's connected to school funding. And the right. question I think that we may be entertaining is this really all part of a much broader discussion about how we fund um, public school? Thank you. Larry Coopley. You got your little blue hand up. Okay. Um, so, Kate, where we when we last dropped off, you were um, asking for a motion. Yes. So I would move that we uh, uh, agree to concur with the Senate on S three forty three. Second. Do we need a second? Discussion. Okay, clerk shall commence to call the roll. Representative Webb. 
Yes. Representative Kupali. Yes. Representative Conlon. Yes. Representative James. Yes. Representative Hooper. Yes. Representative Toof. Yes. Representative Bachelor. Yes. Representative Gian Batista. Yes. Representative Elder. Yes. Representative Austin. Yes. Representative Matos. This is Representative Chris Matos, and I vote yes. That's it. So the vote is 11-0-0. Zero, zero. 11 zero, zero. Okay, great. Good work, team. Um, so that's really it for us for today. Are there any is chance for discussion on any topics before we end on Friday? Just about, uh, again, I had emailed you about the districts yes. that haven't passed a budget. Just again, what is the process for that in terms of, because it seemed like they really needed some an answer as soon as possible. I'm just wondering, are we waiting for the Senate or I'm not clear where we left off. So there was an agreement between the House and Senate leadership um, which actually included myself and the um, chair of, of uh, Senate Ad to agree that uh, bills would start in the Senate. And at that time, the Senate was actually ready for remote voting and we were not, that the bills would start there and we would have agreement before a bill left the, le left the committee room. We, at this point, do not have a agreement um, and, um, the Senate at this point has uh, been, um, has resisted taking further testimony um, or lo looking at our bill or engaging in conversation. That is my most recent um, communication with the uh, chair of Senate education. In the meantime, there is discussion going on at the level of leadership to see um, if there are alternatives on how we might address this. So our options currently, as I see them, are we concur with the Senate, we wait to hear from leadership, um, and that, that's really, really it at this point. So do you have a timeline in terms of maybe by next Wednesday? I don't. It's pretty constantly on my I would. Um... Yeah. Put forward that I'm I'm more oh sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Okay. Um I uh I'm more in favor of concurring with the Senate's version given the Secretary of State's guidance um in the past week about remote voting and given the indications we heard from a lot of districts that votes will be attempted. I think that um it was interesting for me to learn that the Senate did at least uh, consider the 4% escalator and arrived at their sort of 100% level through what seemed to be a, at the least a, a bipartisan process. Um, and so it's complicated and I, I was interested in our version of the bill, but I did think that the Secretary of State's recent ruling on, on different provisions um, changed things enough for me that I would, I would vote to concur just to give some, um, a definitive answer. I just speak for myself in that regard. Okay. I hadn't heard that piece of the hundred percent. So that's a that's a new piece of information for me. What the, did the, the Senate say that they would um, instead of the eighty seven percent that they would let a hundred percent? So the current law, just to clarify, current law is the way it is right now is that you may borrow up to 87% of your budget from uh, a bank. Yeah. At that point, your tax rate is set at $1. Yeah. And the understanding is that you continue to vote until you pass a budget. 
that was set up for a different time when setting up and having another vote is relatively easy. Mm -hmm. It's also setting it up at a time where the electorate, uh, the electorate voting in May does not look that different from the electorate voting on March 2nd. Um, so those, those are some significant uh, differences. Okay. Um, the, the, child, the pushback that we heard from the school boards uh, related to accepting that language is some of them felt that that would actually be worse um, because that the voters would feel comfortable uh, leaving it at last year's budget um, often with a lack of awareness as to what uh, what the impact would be, such uh -huh. as having to get rid of 10, 20 teachers under contract or no athletic program or whatever. So that's what that's the that's one of the reasons that uh, we've continued the conversation is because of the feedback that we heard that while some of them that might be better, we heard from others that that could be devastating <laughs> if they're not able to. Um, get the vote. We, the current bill that we had in 6.1 was to say you have three options. Um, it was two or three options, I can't remember. But at any rate, um, and it, it, refer, it, it basically said, it, it, or you can just take your, um, your last worn budget and, and pass that. Uh, another conversation that has come forward in a conversation with with some some folks was to where the Senate bill um, the Senate bill said uh, if you don't have a budget by six thirty you have last year's budget but you can keep voting. Another option is to say if you don't have a budget by June thirty you have your last worn budget but you can keep voting. So that's, that's something that was in conversation at, at one point. <clears throat> Thank you. Others? Uh, Kate, I, maybe we should hold this conversation on Tuesday uh, just because of wanting to have it on the agenda. Uh, but like, Caleb and I did talk a little bit about this as well and, and sort of, um, I, I, uh, my, my mind has gone back and forth and back and forth uh, about, well, is what the Senate is offering better than nothing? And for a while, I convinced myself that it was. But I had a talk with some school board folks who, who, who reminded me of the discussion that you um, bring up that um, with the sort of fallback of the 2020 spending, that that might influence the way people vote, knowing that, hey, I can vote this down because at least the district can always just fall back on 2020 spending. Um, and which could be, as we heard, especially from Milton, I think that could be pretty, pretty devastating. Yeah. Um, so I, I remain somewhat scrambled on this. I probably could use the weekend to think about it, probably the weekend for whatever discussions are going on elsewhere to take place. And maybe we'll start next week with a a new bright sunny day. Nice. Do, we, do we know? Um, do we know of or what discussions are going on elsewhere? Has there been any response from any of you from your school boards that are? I mean, I, I do we know what's going on? So Dylan has one. Chris Matos has one. I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah, I, I've got I mean, Will Hancock. Yeah. I, yeah, Dylan. I could just give you the perspective that um, I, I have a pretty continuous feedback loop with my district, and they liked the elements in our proposal. Um, but I think at this point, you know, there is a reality that if, if we can't find consensus, you know, I. I don't want to jump to conclusions. I'd like the weekend to check in, but we got to move something sooner or later. And so I'm, I'm feeling pretty flexible so long as it provides um, the districts some ground to work within. And, you know, I could see 
pros and cons to both proposals, but I did get a pretty warm reception last week. Or was it earlier this week, recently, when we looked at it? Is, is, level, is, is level funding a, I mean, that seems to be the, my point taken that it's not going to work for a lot of the districts. It's devastating to say. That's what I, that's what I'm hearing, that it's, yeah. that it's really troublesome for a lot of districts. So, and I don't know how we get around this, Kate. I honestly don't. I mean, I think, I think you've seen, you know, at least, I mean, Phil is just like steadfast here with what he wants to do. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Kate, is it accurate to say that some key, some districts have given out RIF notices to their teachers and some have missed that deadline? I think we're past the RIF. Do you know the story? I think we're past RIF, aren't we? Um, I, I think we're past RIF now, but I, I do wonder if some are, you know, did it earlier in time. So I, that's, that's the, I think Jim, the answer Jim, to that is, is that... Jim, um, Jim, let oh, I'm Jim sorry. answer. Okay. Jim Demery. I was going to say that there, there are two different things here. One is for a contract renewal, uh, teachers have to be notified by April 15. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't lay off teachers at a very date as part of a RIF. That would be part of our collective bargaining process in terms of listing the agreement. So while we're past the April 15th to date, that I don't think it's decisive in terms of whether or not you can do a RIF. That's going to be controlled by local bargaining. Right. Um, oh, would that be a, another COVID-19 bill in the, in the realm of things happening? I don't know. Um, there was a conversation that I had with a small group earlier today with the three chairs and the speaker, looking at if we were to dream big with COVID money, what are some things that we might consider? Broadband. Um, Broadband. Uh, this is what I brought up. I brought up, um, Brad, you know, technology and there's, we can differentiate it in two ways. One is the energy and technology committee can look at actual broadband build out we might be actually looking at um, uh, devices for students or for schools. Mm -hmm. It's something that, that we could look at. The other thing I brought up is um, COVID money for compensatory education for kids who are losing ground. Mm -hmm. Anything else folks can think of? Can, could we stretch it for um, construction, school construction? Can we kind of wind COVID-19 into that? I, I did bring up um, I did bring up that bill uh, in terms of things that we you know we were looking at what what did we work on and pre-K and literacy which I didn't see uh, we could we could do much with at this point in time but um, and the agencies are a little busy right now but I, I said that um, it may be worthwhile to consider doing something with our construction bill. I did tell them that I am in conversation with NCSL about having them advocate, should there be, should there be stimulus money that's for infrastructure to not just make it roads, but include schools. So I did bring that up as something, you know, if we could consider work that we would have liked to have completed, that that might be the one that we would identify as probably the most relevant. Would you agree or not? I would. Yeah. I see a couple. How much? How much money are we talking about? Like, how much are we anticipating? If in um, terms of dreaming big. Yeah, I don't know. It has to do, I think, with additional funds that could come in, as well as I, what we're doing with our one point whatever million it is, billion. I I gotta say, state colleges. Yeah. Uh, if that's on the table. I was going to ask Definitely. about higher ed. I don't know what, how that factors in. Um, 
there is there is conversation going on about having a larger conversation about um, our Vermont State Colleges. Um, we are going to have a joint meeting in mid-May with Commerce to hear from the New England Board of Higher Education as to uh, trends in higher ed and workforce. Um, and um, Avery's, I think she, I think you scheduled that now, Avery. I think it's in, and there'll be a joint meeting with Commerce. So. What about childcare? I mean, I, you know, I don't really know how this works. I mean, is, is this just you, you line up, you line up your most urgent, dire, critical, you know, areas of inequity and try to figure out, uh, you know, how, how a pandemic has shown a bright light on the areas where your state isn't working? I, I, I mean, I don't know how, I, you know, I don't know how, to, how you try to get issues in line for for funds, federal funds flowing through the filter, but, you know. Larry? I'm just looking at, looking at some notes and um, I'd be very cautious about really dreaming big time on COVID, COVID funds, um, only if it has a direct nexus to um, COVID will those funds be used? So I, I, I'd be very, very careful about how you approach that money, if there yeah. will be, right. and especially through the agency. Um, I'd be very cautious about doing a lot of dreaming about cash. Yeah, we were just to provide, be providing dreams, not making decisions about it. That's right. <laughs> Um, Avery, just let me know that we are meeting with New England Board of Higher Education on May 19th. Great. The only other thing I would mention in the short term is transportation. Just school districts are doing some things with transportation that are a little outside of their normal contracts, especially right. in relation to food service. And I don't know that it's causing big problems yet. I think that they've had, there have been, you know, good partnerships on both sides of those contracts. But um, to the extent there's some short-term dollars, that is a sort of um, extraordinary service that's being provided by our school districts right now. And, and I'd love to see any, any short-term money flow their way to help offset those costs. When we had the secretary in, we brought that subject up and he thought that that would be absolutely clear COVID type expense. Oh. That's an expense that's totally COVID related. Oh, that's um, good to hear. Yeah. So that, make, that makes sense to me. <laughs> me too. Anything else? So, okay, so I will um, we'll have another conversation. We're, we're gonna talk about lead on Tuesday. We'll have another conversation about, um, about uh, the 19 districts as well. Uh, where the committee stands on that. So is that, okay. a, is, that yeah. a vote, is that a vote, Kate? I mean, do we vote on that, the 19 districts or just- We, do don't, we, we don't have a bill yet. What, okay, so there will be, okay. Yeah. yeah. Peter? Yeah, I was just gonna ask um, what the plan was for uh, committee time on Tuesday. Well, at the moment it's just led. Okay. Do we know what and, time? Yes, we're on the same times now. It's uh, Avery. It's it's noon on Tuesday. Tuesdays it's noon, and Fridays it's two to four. If we need be meetings, and so um, we're every um, we're every Friday two. from two to four, yes. and Tuesday from noon to two. Yes, that's if we have work to do. Okay, and then I've got the floor schedule. Great. Yeah. Glad things are settling in. Okay. Um, um, do I email Avery the record of action and copy Rebecca? Um, hold it for now. Um, we can get it in as late as Sunday because <laughs> she's working remotely. So let me just make sure that we're going to, this is the way we're going to do it. Um, okay. That we're, um, I just have to check with leadership on that. Sorry. Okay. Um, um, and text, I'll let you know. Maybe text. Yeah, text me or email me if yeah. you need me to send that in over the weekend. Yeah. That sounds good. 
All right. Um, I think we we can go off.